Welcome back to Brush Up Your Game, and today we have part 14 of the Cosmic Encounter Power Showdown. Or, as we could also think of it, the final three brackets. And my goal is to get through all three here. So, uh, starting things off, we have Alternate Timeline Demon, which uh, fixes many of the problems with, uh, with Demon. The Alternate Timeline version here uh, lets you... Uh, play when you're not an ally or a main player. Uh, you discard an attack card from your hand. If it's lower than both attack cards, uh, each main player sends one of, uh, one of your ships to the warp. Uh, if your card's higher than a main player, uh, you dominate the ships of that player's allies. After the encounter is determined, you may take up to four of your ships from one of your colonies and then use them to replace any of those ally ships in the encounter on a one-for-one -one basis before those ships land on the planet. So it's a uh, it, it's a chance to to get involved when you weren't. You're risking some things. It's optional, and I like that it's optional. Uh, which, on the other hand. Which is an essence power? And it's not one that I'm particularly fond of. Um, which hands out curses. And in doing so, which kind of makes the game less fun? Uh, these Curses are far from enjoyable. And it, it's it's not that they're hideous. They're, which is a, a very interesting power. But um, the, the curses just aren't as engaging. I, I, as big of a problem as I have with the original demon, I really like how demon's been fixed and um uh, you know which gets some points for what it does but demon is just moving on demon versus throwback uh throwback is a fun uh power because it uses the old uh, eon templating for everything which uh, you know, if people aren't familiar with it, they go, wait, what, what is this? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. And this is, I believe the old Oracle artwork. Uh, it's the old box cover, I believe. But, uh, yeah, you, you draw seven cards instead of eight. You, you refer to, uh, bases, uh, tokens, challenges, Challenge cards, edicts, compromise cards. Uh, but you can use this power to purge from your hand one or more modern cards that have a card type other than attack, negotiate, flare, edict, or kicker. Uh, it's cool, but it's not all that good. It's a meta power. It's a power of the old power. And... With that, Demon is going to move forward. Throwback, fun idea. I would gladly play it, but I'd play it on a lark, not on this, like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, Grumpus versus Booster. Uh, and this is Grumpus' alternate timeline. So these are both Odyssey powers. Uh, Booster was originally a promo for... Escape Velocity. So Booster, uh, when you launch ships, if you launch one or two ships, discard the same number of cards from your hand. If you have any, if you launch three or more, draw a card and then discard a card. It's okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to go wrong with that uh, because you're either purging cards or gaining cards. Uh, I think Booster would be very nice in a uh, two-power game. Because it's it's a very supportive power. Uh, Grumpus, on the other hand, and, and now this is revised Grumpus here. So 
Uh, as a main player, after you lose an encounter or fail to make a deal, each player with a colony in your system must send one of their ships from your system to the warp. Uh, if this causes a player to lose a colony, you may establish a foreign colony on any planet in that player's home system. You don't lose your power because of having too few home colonies. Uh, I think this has fixed the problems with Grumpus uh, to the point where I would gladly play Grumpus alternate timeline. Uh, it's very passive, but really you're just trying to lose. Uh, and... This can work on offense. And, uh, yeah, it's only going to work once people have colonies in your system. But it, it it is a better power than Booster. Booster is supportive power, but Grumpus just has better things going on here. So, I'm going to move Grumpus on. Tide... Versus Swindler. Now, I know Tide is an old, yeah, storm power. Uh, you get two cosmic tokens on this sheet. Uh, after you win, you place one token on the sheet, and then you and each of your allies draw a card for each token on the sheet. After you lose, if there's more than one token on the sheet, use this power to discard one token from the sheet. Then the opposing main player and each of their allies must discard one card of their choice from their hands. My problem with Tide is that Tide helps almost as much as it helps you. It helps other people. Swindler. Uh, Swindler gets a Swindler token for each other player in the game. Uh, making sure that one of them is the mark. And you have the power of... Identity theft. After the defense has been determined, you can use this power to reveal your mark by flipping all Swindler tokens face up, remove them from the game, you and your mark, then exchange everything, including physical seats, alien powers, player colors, ships, hands, systems, planets, colonies. It's everything. Uh, it's... And then the revealed mark... Gains a colony in the offense's home system during each other player's start turn phase. Um, it's a neat idea, but I, I'm not a big fan of either of these powers, weirdly enough. I, I think I'm going with Tide just because it's simpler and it encourages allies. That's where I'm truly at here. Now, Grumpus versus Tide. Grumpus feels like it gives me a power. Tide is giving everybody a power. So I'm going to give the me because I'm selfish that way. Uh, now, Demon versus Grumpus. Uh, Grumpus is going to help me get colonies. Demon also going to help me get colonies. Demon playing a little bit meaner. I like it. It's close. That's why I'm going to go with 4-2 here. Um, but Demon's going to move all the way forward here. Okay. Particle versus Host. If I remember correctly, Particle... Nope, Particle is new. Uh, host. Host has got to be around yeah host from dominion so host you have the power to channel at the start of any player's turn you may remove any or all flares on this sheet from the game and or draw cards from the unused flare deck to place face down on this sheet until you have three here in either order at any time you can use this power to play a wild flare from the sheet as though it were in your hand if the flare would return to your hand after use discard it to the regular discard pile if you're zapped, place the flare, the flare back on this sheet. So host basically plays and adds unused flares into the game, which is neat. I, I like that aspect. You're going to get more flares, make for a more zany game. And in some ways, what's not to like about that? Um, lots of 
lots of good. Particle, on the other hand, and this is me part of, here we go it's like particles old well, particle from in, uh, from eons as the offense or an ally if your ship should land on the targeted planet and that planet does not have an entanglement token use this power to entangle it with another planet Place one unassigned entanglement token next to the targeted planet and place its paired entanglement token with the same letter next to any other planet that's not already entangled. Whenever the number of ships of your ships on any entangled planet changes, including immediately after using this power, you must add your ships to or remove your ships from the corresponding entangled planet so that you have the same number of ships on both. Ships move to resolve the entanglement must come from or go to your other colonies on planets that are not entangled. Whenever you are unable to resolve an entanglement or you have no ships on a pair of entangled planets, those planets paired entanglement tokens are discarded. If entangled planet is removed from the game, the paired entanglement tokens affecting it are discarded. Your ships must stay on the, on the remaining planet. Um... It's, yeah, this is just complex. And host creates a more fun game. That's that's where we're at here. Host, more interesting than Particle. Reborn, uh, from Alliance. Reborn, uh, for each ship you lose to the warp, you can draw a card, and that's good. For each ship you retrieve from the warp, you may use this power to discard a card of your choice from your hand. Uh, reborn, cycling their stuff. Bulwark, just bad. Uh, so Reborn, moving on very easily. Uh, reborn versus Host. Personally, I like being able to trim my hand more than play a bunch of flares, some of which are good, some of which are bad. Uh, or uninteresting. So I'm going to move Reborn forward. Bubble versus Bandit. Uh, Bubble is a power I didn't know that I liked or didn't think I would like, but it's one I ended up doing a power video on just Bubble. And I, I ended up really liking Bubble. I saw Bubble in a play by forum game and I like it. Uh, there's a lot of good here. You want the full explanation of it, you know, feel free. Go watch the, the video there. But Bubble versus Bandit. Bandit is... Uh, revealing the top three cards in the encounter deck. If they're all different types, then discard a card of your choice from your hand. If two of the revealed types or two of the revealed cards are the same type, you can add any one of the revealed cards to your hand. If they're all the same type, you can add any or all of the revealed cards to your hand, and all other players must discard all cards of that type from their hands, uh, and you discard any revealed cards that are not added to your hand. It's a chance power. I think it's poorly named, but I, I like what's happening with Bandit. Um, I do like what's happening with Bubble, too. They're both fun, kind of chancy powers. And uh, I just like Bubble a bit more than Bandit. There, there's a bit more to it. Uh, Tyrant versus Ghoul. Well, Ghoul... Ghoul is uh, getting rewards for... Uh, defeating ships. They get defender rewards for every ship they send to the warp, which is a good power. Not bandit. Tyrant. Uh, tyrant. There we go. Uh, subjugates ships uh, after you win an encounter where you played an attack card. 
Uh, you subjugate one involved ship from each player on the losing side. Subjugated ships are captured, placed on this sheet, instead of being sent to the warp. When you're determined to be the defense against a player whose ships you have subjugated, use this power to force that player to discard one card at random for each of their subjugated ships. When you're the offense and having an encounter with a player whose ships you have subjugated, after you reveal an attack card, use this power to add the number of that player's subjugated ships to your total. When you would be forced to send ships to the warp, you can choose to send subjugated ships to the warp instead. You may choose to release subjugated ships as part of a deal. When a ship is removed from this sheet, it's no longer subjugated. Um, I I like the different aspects that Tyrant brings. That's a it's actually a fun power. It, it's I would call it one of the better Cosmic Storm powers. Um, Ghoul though, Ghoul does what it does really really well, uh, and I I want to move Tyrant on. Uh, but I'm going to move Ghoul on. And I like Ghoul versus Bubble. Uh, see, Bubble gets players involved. And it, it lets people play these reinforcement cards, get attack cards in. But reinforcement cards are so limited. Ghoul, what Ghoul does well, is basically always happening. While Bubble's cool, Ghoul is better. And then Ghoul versus Reborn. This is this is a good matchup, but Ghoul's just adding, 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 and adding to their hand. Reborn is trimming. And as much as I like trimming, I like just adding, adding and adding more. So we got Ghoul and we got Demon Alternate Timeline advancing. Let's get to the next bracket here. Fungus versus Nightmare. Fungus is kind of like Tyrant. They are taking ships except fungus is making these stacks of ships every ship they defeat is going underneath the stack and fungus gets some massive stacks nightmare on the other hand nightmare is uh an essence power and once per encounter when a main player has declined to invite you to ally or another player is on the winning side of an encounter when you're on the losing side you can give them a bad dream from your essence card uh, cash. You cannot give a bad dream card to a player that already has one. When you reveal a player's bad dream, you may reveal a player's bad dream at any time. That player reads the card and carries out its effect. Revealed bad dream cards are returned to you. Um, and there's 10 different bad dreams. They all do crazy bad things. Uh, some of them aren't that bad. Like if you're... Late, the late for work. If you're starting your regroup phase, instead you're actually skipping your regroup phase. Uh, if you are winning the game along with one or more other players, instead those other players are actually winning without you. That's really bad. Um, you know, some of these are very bad. Uh, some of them mildly annoying. If you're accepting an alliance invitation, instead you are actually declining all invitations. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, Nightmare, probably a better power than Fungus. Uh, and for that, I'm going to, to keep it and move it on. Uh, TikTok puts a timer on the game, and it's an annoying timer. Nightmare is going to move on. TikTok does get a point for uh, originality, though. Uh, Architect versus mirror mirror has this very fun power of swapping the the digits on a card so they take a 15 into a 51 an 08 into an 80 uh, and that's mirror i i enjoy mirror i cannot spell architect that is yeah our architect there we go architect uh, when you win as a main player at the end of the encounter you use this power to create or expand a tower in your opponent's system if you don't already have a tower in the system choose two of that systems uh two of that system's planets merge those two planets together placing all ships from both 
on top of the two level tower. If you already have a tower in that opponent's system, then instead select another planet in that system and merge it into the tower's new level, placing its ships on top. Only normal player color planets can be merged. Uh, as a main player, after... And counter cards are revealed. Use this power to double your total if you have a tower of two or more levels in the opponent's system, a tower of three or more levels in a system adjacent to the opponent's system, or a tower of four or more levels in any system. Each tower counts as a single planet. Towers are permanent even if you lose the use of them. Uh, if a player cannot gain enough foreign colonies to win the game due to insufficient foreign planets, you win the game. If any player. Yeah, so basically you're trying to box somebody out. Um, I have not played with Architect. The power sounds really interesting to me, but it's going to take a long time. And, and Architect's only happening when you win as a main player. You're going to win the game faster than that. Mirror is novel. It's scary. Uh, people really think about the way that they use their... Uh, their cards. Poison. Uh, poison is a very annoying uh, power because they're, they have hazardous home systems. Each time a card with a hazard warning is drawn from the Destiny deck, use this power. Each foreign colony in your home system loses one ship to the warp. Uh, hazardous Destiny deck is about one third it's slightly less it's one of every player's color one of the specials i believe but none of the wild so that's why it's slightly less than one in three uh, it might not be any of the specials in which case it's significantly less than one in three but not one in four uh in addition as main player if both players reveal attack cards and your opponent's attack card values within two of your attack you may use this power to win the encounter regardless of the actual totals yeah, poison does some weird stuff. But how does it compare with Perfectionist, the alternate timeline edition? Well, Perfectionist alternate timeline is once per encounter. When you add any cards to your hand, you may use this power to place any of those cards face down on the sheet in a reject pile. You may also use this power when you are dealt your starting hand. When another player would take cards from your hand at random, you may use this power to force that player to take some or all of them at random from your reject pile. And my apologies for waving, I have a fly in here. Uh, you may offer cards from your reject pile as part of a deal. If any player cannot draw cards because of deck, you have to re uh, reshuffle, discard them all. Um, perfectionist, much more interesting to me. It's the, the hand pruning aspect of, of the game. But, yeah, the poison becomes annoying, but it does have that cool feature to win encounters. It's rare. It's rare that it gets that poison pulls that off. Uh, I'm going to move Perfectionist on, though. Perfectionist versus Mirror. Uh, boy, heads up, Mirror will counter that because Perfectionist doesn't want to get rid of anything. I still think I'd rather have Perfectionist. Um, and that's saying something because mirror is a power I very much enjoy. Perfectionist versus nightmare. Ooh, I'm going to have a think on that. I'll come back. Grudge versus pack rat. Um, grudge is a power all about making it annoying if you, uh, don't ally with the grudge. And, um, yeah, it's. Well, it's it's bad, but let's look at Pack Rat. Pack Rat, uh, as a main player, before encounter cards are selected, you use this power to take one object belonging to the other main player, place it on the sheet. That player must give you one uh, one of his or her ships from a colony, place it on top of the objects as a owner ID, collectible objects, a card at random from hand. A ship from the warp, the top card from a set of essence cards, an empty planet from that player's system, a uh, face down unresearched tech card or a token on that player's alien sheet, including special tokens understood to be on the sheet, like Fire Dancer, Grudge, Particle. Um, you couldn't take, like, um, 
the tourist's ship or something like that. Uh, and each object adds one. You can release objects as part of a deal. During the alliance phase, you may release objects in trades. Uh, you can only gain a foreign colony from such a trade. Sorry, only you may gain a foreign colony from such a trade. Uh, you must accept a simple trade of a foreign colony for an owner's object. Can't turn that one down. That's, that's really good. Uh, you may use this power to finalize each alliance phase trade. Each released object is restored to its original purpose and location and its ID ship returns to any of its owner's colony. Yeah, so the pack red's really just using their stuff to get into deals. I like that more than grudge. Both I find annoying, though. Uh, hate versus rack. Ugh. Just talk about... Talk about annoying powers. Hate... I have probably talked about enough as to why I don't like it. Rack. Uh, rack, I remember from the Mayday set that I added in to my collection. But let's see what they did with, uh, with this. Uh, in Rack, you have the power to injure as a main player ally. After a player on the opposing side plays a card, use this power. That player must send one of their ships from any of their colonies to the warp. Yeah. Uh, plays a card. That that's Plays a flare. Plays an encounter card. Yeah. Uh, th this is... <sighs> Rack moves on just because hate's so bad, but... It, yeah, pack rats moving past rat or past rack, and, and I don't need to explain why. Okay, uh, visionary versus philanthropist. Uh, you all know I have a love for philanthropists, uh, visionary. You have the power of perceptions, main player before encounter cards are selected. You may use this power to specify an encounter card that your opponent must play. You must play the attack 10. Uh, if your opponent does not have such a card, they must play any encounter card, or they can play anything they wish. If they do have the card, uh, they must play that. Yeah. Or you can be like, you will be playing a negotiate that sort of thing it's visionary is fun philanthropists i think more fun you get to prune your hand uh but visionary definitely fun uh philanthropist versus sniveler as much as i like whining and believe me in a game of cosmic i like whining uh philanthropist is is a better power uh philanthropist versus pack rat object stealing while fun is not it's not going to help you win the game the same way that pruning your hand and getting new hands and yeah it, philanthropist all right uh nightmare versus perfectionist alternate timeline uh i have had to think about it i cannot have a tie as much as i want to have a tie um uh, i'm i'm giving this to nightmare by the slim of slim margins it's it's tough okay uh we are going to power through i realized i had the camera on the wrong setting there you go sorry pack rat philanthropist nightmare okay we're going to power through we're going to get the last bracket done in this video and then we will move forward uh emperor Versus neighbor. Emperor. Power of tribute. Uh, whenever a player sends one or more ships into the encounter uh, in your system or gains colony in your system, you demand tribute. That player must show you one card from their hand 
and must also give you one of their ships from a colony. Place the, the card face down on the sheet and put the ship on top of the card uh, as an ID owner. Yeah. So Emperor, annoying. Uh, at the end of any encounter, as long as there are three or more total tributes on the sheet from at least two or two different players, uh, you can look at all of them. Add the tributes you consider worthy to your hand and discard those you consider unworthy. You may return one of the unworthy tributes to its giver, causing that player to lose three ships to the warp. Uh, yeah, Emperor, kind of annoying. Neighbor. Neighbor, on the other hand. Let's find Neighbor. Uh, you have the power of community as main player or an ally. After the main player on your side reveals an attack card, use this power to add one to your total for each ship you have in the targeted system that's not involved in the encounter. I, I, I neighbors okay, emperors better. Um, sadist original sadist was not very good. Alternate timeline better. So Emperor moves forward. Uh, Deuce has the power to uh, play two cards, which I like. Uh, Siren has the power uh, to lure. Uh, Any time a player in whose home system you have a colony is chosen as defense, you can use this power to aim the hyperspace gate at one of your home planets on which you have a colony uh, and become the defense instead. The encounter... In uh, continues normally. Anytime you win as the defense, you immediately gain a free colony in the offense's home system. Siren, scary good. I do think Deuce is undervalued by a lot of people, but Siren and the ability to just gain a colony as a defender is is crazy. That's like one of the best uh, defensive abilities. Uh, Siren versus Seeker. Uh, seeker, as a main player or an ally, you may use this power after alliances are formed, but before encounter cards are selected to uh, ask one yes or no question to one of the main players. Uh, that player must answer truthfully. If your question involves the player's intentions, uh, they must abide by their answer. And that's it. So I, I like Seeker. Seeker gains a lot of information, and it's a very good power, but Siren is better in all regards than seeker uh and siren versus emperor i'm i'm giving it to siren again it's it's the power to gain colonies versus the power to gain cards so we're going colonies okay and yes the very last bunch here decoy versus coordinator a decoy oh okay coordinator here coordinator you have the power to schedule As the offense so drawing a card from the Destiny deck, you may use this power to look at the top three cards and choose one of them to be the Destiny card you've drawn. Place the other two cards on the top and or bottom of the Destiny deck in any order you choose. Uh, if there's fewer than three cards remaining in the Destiny deck, shuffle it up. And you only get this once per encounter, of course. Um, never quite understood the restriction of Do Not Use with Dictator because you could have just shuffled three cards and given those to dictator and let dictator choose which one you're going to but yeah anyway um yeah that's coordinator coordinator eh, meh it's a worse version of will decoy you have the power of contingency as main player before encounter cards are selected. You may use this power to play an encounter card face up on the sheet. During the reveal phase, after you reveal your normal encounter, you may choose to swap your encounter card with the card on the sheet. After the encounter, your opponent decides what to do with the card on this sheet. They may take it, discard it, or force you to take it back. Yeah, I like decoy a whole lot more. 
Uh, and I mean, decoy is not amazing, but coordinator is absolutely bad. Um, sycophant, and I actually do know how to say that word now. Um, because boy, the first time I saw that, I had no idea. Uh, sycophant places 10 tokens on this sheet. Uh, and you have the power of flattery. If you are not a main player after alliances are formed, you can use this power to flatter one of the more main players, even if you're allied against them. If the player you flatter wins the encounter or makes a deal, discard one token from the sheet. If there's no more tokens on the sheet, you immediately win the game. And you can still win the game via the normal method. Sick of it is, is okay. Amoeba, you can ooze. I probably spelled that wrong. Yeah, there we go. O-E. Amoeba, you can ooze um, after you choose encounter cards before they're revealed. Uh, you can increase or decrease the number of ships you have in the encounter. Uh, you can go above four. And that's it. Uh, Amoeba makes for a great second power. Sycophant is actually a power. Um uh, and as cool as Decoy is, I, I, I think I like Sycophant more. Uh, yeah, basically you're just saying, I think you're going to win. And there you go. Bleeding Heart versus Warrior. Uh, Warrior gets tokens every time they win. Um, or lose. Basically, uh, when you're the main player, you add one token to the sheet if you win, two if you lost. Uh, and those tokens help you. Bleeding Heart. Uh, on any encounter before allies are invited, you can use this power to say, let there be peace. If you do, all attack cards with value of 10 or lower become negotiate cards when revealed, and all compensation is doubled. Um, I mean, I like the idea, but let there be war. Uh, Bleeding Heart's probably a better power, but Warrior's just more fun. Uh, Miser gets a second hand. Silencer will stop somebody from talking. And, of course, it's an Odyssey. See, I know Silencer from the original days. Uh, and Silencer's got to be a red power. Nope. It's yellow. I am I legitimately shocked at that. Uh, silencer, yeah, as a main player after Destiny's drawn, you may use this power to place one silence token, total silence side face up on the sheet of any player who does not have a silence token. When a player with silence speaks, uh, invites allies, accepts alliances, or uses optional powers, they are penalized for being too noisy. Penalize them either by sending any one sh of their ships not in the encounter to the warp or by forcing them to discard a card at random from their hand. If a player has a total silence token at the end of the encounter, they flip it to partial silence side. If a player has a partial silence token after they are penalized, they return it, turn that token to your supply. Uh, yeah. Look, silencer. Silencer is fun, but it's group dependent. How that's going to play out. Miser is legit fun it's cool to have a second power or a second hand and i would always take that second hand warrior gets unstoppable the longer the game goes but i find that most games end before warrior can actually make a difference so i'm going second hand and i'm going to take sycophant who can win the game in a different way a cool way over the guy with two hands so there we go we are now to the top 32 and we now have the final 32 so this is our bracket if you stayed with us this long i appreciate you we got brute alternate timeline sorcerer maven magician pentaform relic pretender tortoise aristocrat loser dragon vulch explorer perfectionist inferno diplomat Insect Assistant, Doppelganger, Lizard, Winner, The Cult, 
Remora, the Claw, Pacifist, Human, Demon Alternate Timeline, Ghoul, Nightmare, Philanthropist, Siren, and Sycophant. That is our 32. We will get to a winner from here in probably another mm, three videos. So I know this one was long, but hopefully it was worth it. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Really do appreciate y'all. Uh, until next time, keep brushing up your game. Take care, everybody.